Hey guys, we're here in Long Beach, California, and we're at the Electric Hybrid Marine Expo. We're gonna be checking out the most cutting edge technology when it comes to marine electrification. Come on, let's check it out. Okay, we are in front of e Falke. It's a Swiss company that manufactures inboards and electric outboards. Let's take a look. So one of the really unique things about e Falke, which by the way means Falcon in, in German, is that they manufacture the entire system. A lot of companies are using um, a Mercury or a Conrad outdrive, but they actually use their Swiss watch making precision to build their own outdrive. So it's supposed to be super quiet, uh, cattle rotating props. Uh, they have uh, seawater, raw water, induction for cooling. And this motor is actually 260 kilowatt, continuous power, 300 kilowatt uh, peak power, which gives it about 400 horsepower. This is their own inverter, uh, and that's a really unique thing that they've actually designed their own motor, reduction gear, and outdrive for the system. Uh, so we're here with the founders of Ifalke. Uh, we have Mohammed and Johan, and uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about their their new inboard motor and uh, and their outboard. Yeah. So hi, Ifalke um, uh, is a Swiss company. It's uh, near Zurich, uh, Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland is very famous for its gears uh, precision. And of course, the power electronics. So this is why we are in Switzerland. Uh, the idea of the marine electrification is to get the efficiency up. So your batteries become smaller and the whole cost of the system becomes smaller. So uh, we started by looking at how to achieve that. And the only way to do it by kind of uh, drive the efficiency of the inverter, uh, the motor, as well as the gears. So the gears in the beginning, uh, we tried different gears from the ICE uh, kind of uh, internal combustion engine uh, type uh, marine, but they are very noisy once you take away the engine, uh, the noisy engine, and you have a noiseless uh, motor, electric motor, you're going to hear a lot about the noise in the, engine, in the gears. So this is why we decided to do the whole uh, system. All the gears are precision made, so it's very, uh, uh, there are no noise. And when you get on the electric boat, the biggest thing you're going to have is the noise of the water. Uh, and that's going to really calm you down. So we, we emphasize our efficiency and noise. By making the world's most efficient motor and drive system, this is a 400 horsepower. This motor is very small for 400 horsepower. So this is now the world's smallest. Uh, we offer it in uh, stern drive, onboard, outboard. We offer it also in outboards and then onboards. Um, so three different uh, combination. Uh, we take care, uh, safety for us is number one. Uh, this is an 800 volt system. Uh, uh, safety is critical. So we want to make sure that uh, uh, the batteries used are safe. Uh, we recommend always use LFP batteries. Uh, they, are, uh, they don't catch on fire uh, in, in the car. If there's a fire, you open the door and get out and, uh, and on the sea, on a lake, you have a fire, you have a problem. So the first thing is safety for us. Uh, and then the second thing is efficiency. By having very efficient motor system, uh, your battery is going to be smaller and your weight will be less. And of course, the, the total cost of conversion is going to be very, very low. Uh, so uh, company name is E-Falke. Falke is uh, Falcon in German. So E, Electric Falcon. Falcon is very small, is very compact, was very powerful. And that's the idea. We try to kind of mimic that. This is very short, right? So when you sit in a boat, the idea is you can see the back. So this is where the, the, the platform will be, the boat platform. And then you don't see it anymore. So you have, uh, it looks like twin counter rotating props. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And you have a, a seawater, raw water cooling yeah. system? Yeah. Okay. Right. And here comes the, the, the warm water out. Raw water discharge yeah. in the back there, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank That's you very awesome. much. Hey, guys, so this is really exciting. We're going to take a look at a axial flux motor cutaway. Uh, we're going to look at the architecture inside from a company called Yasa. They're based in England and they've actually been purchased by Mercedes-Benz. Uh, and this motor behind me is actually used in uh, Ferrari and a Koenigsegg. And now Lamborghini is also using it. So we're going to take a look at the, the architecture inside. Let's check it out. OK, guys, so this is really fascinating. Uh, we're looking at a cutaway of an axial flux motor from Yasa. 
YASA stands for Yokeless and Segmented Armature. Uh, so basically what we're looking at is a three-phase axial flux motor. So the difference between axial flux and radial flux is that on a, let's say, standard radial flux motor, uh, you have the stator and you have coils uh, all around the, the stator itself, and then you have the internal uh, rotor uh, that, that produces, you get your power uh, here, and you have your internal magnets here that, that rotates and produces uh, force. On an axial flux motor, the stator is actually inside. It's a large disc, so it's actually a much larger diameter than you can get um, with, within the whole frame of the motor itself. So since your diameter is bigger, you have this plate here that is the stator, and the rotor is actually, this is a cutaway of the, the rotor itself um, on this side, and also on the other side of the stator. So the stator is right in the middle, and you have a rotor here, and you have a rotor here. And because of the architecture of this, because you can actually uh, utilize more most of the frame to have uh, more diameter of, uh, of coil and, and rotors, you actually produce more torque in the same size package as a radial flux motor. Um, the other thing that's really unique about this motor is that it is oil cooled. Um, so this stator, all these coils here, um, they have cooling oil running through here that completely saturates all of the coils and comes out the other side here. So uh, one of the reasons why this motor is such high performance is because of the cooling technology. Uh, normally when you run a motor, um, it, once it starts to get too hot, you get degradation of the coils and eventually uh, you'll have a failure. But because the cooling technology is, is what it is, you can actually run this motor uh, at a higher voltage, produce more power, because you can put more power through these coils without the degradation because you have such an efficient cooling, uh, the motor itself can be run at a higher power without the degradation uh, for longer. So you, uh, you get a higher continuous and peak power out of a smaller package. So over here we have uh, twin Yasa motors in Evoa's package, uh, which is for marine application. So um, this is also oil cooled, which goes to a raw water heat exchanger. And these individually are 80 uh, kilowatts each uh, and peak power uh, 160 each. So this total package here, it's a double stack motor. Um, you have actually, they, they brand it as a 300 horsepower system. Uh, so you can imagine what the size of an engine that would, uh, an ICE engine that would need to produce 300 horsepower. Uh, looking at, this is a 300 horsepower package just in, in this small profile right here, utilizing Yasa's axial flux motors. Okay, so we're standing in front of the Safe Boat booth, and I'm really excited about this because I drove Safe Boats for about five years in the Coast Guard. They make an incredible boat. They're now partnering with Vita to electrify one of their boats. Let's take a look. We are here with uh, Tongi of Vita Power, and uh, they've announced a really exciting partnership with Safe Boat, where they're providing uh, the propulsion system for a fully electric uh, Safe Boat. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting to, uh, to uh, be able to electrify such a, a legendary boat. You know, everybody's seen one of them in the marina with the sheriff or the harbor patrol or all the rescue as coast guards so yeah we can do an electric one of those uh, it's a 22e 3e uh, with one of our vita powertrains so it's the safe boat powered by vita and we have uh, in this boat we can fit two batteries and we'll have a uh, one leg with two uh, two propellers so we can have a top speed of uh, 34 knots and uh, at uh, five knots you can run for the whole day what, uh, what size battery and uh, motor size are you guys getting? So the, the batteries are two uh, 63 kilowatt hour batteries and uh, lithium ion and uh, the motor size is uh, 300 horsepower equivalent. When can we look forward to uh, seeing it in, in real life? Yeah, I think the first one will be uh, built over the, the summer. So uh, we, can, yeah, we can look forward to seeing one in Q3 probably. 
uh, no thank you for coming to the boat and uh hopefully yeah like you we are excited to see this boat uh, on the water and uh yeah there should be not just one of them <laughs> yeah, great yeah we're standing in front of power cell group they manufacture hydrogen fuel cell stacks and complete systems they've got some really exciting projects going on the fed chip let's check them out we're here with johan of uh, power cell group yeah and uh can you tell us about what we have in front of us yeah, so this is actually a specifically developed marine fuel cell uh, one of its kind so it's a 200 kilowatt fuel cell built out of two modules so you have here in the upper cabinet you have the fuel cells this is where all the hydrogen is coming in being converted into energy can you show me exactly where the, so the hydrogen comes in the hydrogen comes in actually in the back of the system is being routed up mm -hmm. through the stacks so here is the stack okay. here's where the magic happens where the hydrogen splits up and passes through the membrane so we get like uh, water production going so we produce water and electricity out of the hydrogen that we use okay how do so you evacuate the water the water is evacuated in the bottom of the system so it's channeled down we want to use gravity to get the water out yeah uh, so that's like the exhaust out water humid warm uh, exhausts carrying a lot of water um, so the, the sort of the byproduct of that is of course el electricity so we, we produce DC power that's what we produce it's high quite high voltage this is ranging between 900 volts down to 550 volts okay. DC uh, so we connect this fuel cell to the vessel switchboard. So how do you regulate the voltage output in a fuel cell system? Very relevant question. Yeah. So as the voltage range is very high, you have to stabilize the voltage. And you do that through a DC-DC. You have DC-DC yes, converter. Yes, exactly. exactly. So we have a DC-DC converter. Those are electrically connected to the stacks. Uh, so it's in the back of the system. We have the connectors pushing the, the power to a DC-DC that, that supplies the stabilized voltage to the switchboard on the vessel. What is the bottom of the system here? Yeah, so this is what we call the support module. So the support module consists of a few layers of things. Here is the compressors, the cathode compressors. So this compresses the air coming from the ship side, going into the stacks and, and is taking part in the reaction. This is where we get our oxygen to the reaction. Okay. We're using oxygen on one side, hydrogen on one side of the membrane. The protons pass through, creates water on one side, and then we can we split up the, the electrons go the the outer circuit. So basically, we're creating a, a potential. So the hydrogen is already under pressure. It is under pressure as the oxygen. It is under pressure, oxygen. yes. And also the the that's, that's what we call the stoichiometry, the the, the pressure balance over the membrane. So we have to balance the cathode side with the hydrogen side, so it equalizes. On the very bottom here, you have a cooling system. So we cool the stacks. Here's the coolers for the stacks. Here's the, uh, the cold cool loop. So here we cool all the electronics uh, on board. There's quite a few electronics and the control systems in the system. This, this is a fully autonomous unit. You address this unit with a current request and it responds with the current out. So you basically just control the power by how much current you draw from the system. So you have your, let's say, throttle control. Yes, your throttle is the and current. You, you request a power output. Yes. And so what, what exactly happens? The, uh, it responds system? with an, an acknowledgement that says, OK, I'm ready to provide power. OK, then we, we give that current. To, so the, to the DC DC that DC DC pulls that current the voltage is just following it's like a battery you end up on a curve uh, okay. uh, a slanted curve yeah. yeah so so the voltage is just a, a result of the current yeah. so all the processes through the system is uh, stabilized through uh, controls internally so we have hydrogen recirculation here we have hydrogen pressure control uh, so where we control all the fine things, the, the calibration of the system. So this is um, a not just a fuel cell stack. It's a it's a full system that runs uh, a, and, and and a full process. 
So yeah. you can essentially take this whole system, drop it into a boat yes. that has an electric yes. motor propulsion. As long as you provide it with clean air and hydrogen uh, and connect it to a switchboard, you can run, you can power the switchboard with this fuel cell. And you can put these fuel cells in parallel so we can build larger power plants. So we do a few projects uh, now in the market coming uh, a three megawatt project to the market now. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, so if, if I had two of these, it can produce 400 kW. Yeah. So if you have two of these net end of life, you will produce 400 kilowatts. So if you do 16 of these or perhaps 15, that would be three megawatts. So uh, that then you put them in parallel. Um, you connect them in parallel on the on the bus, uh, electric bus, and uh, basically you, you you just push power. You can have diesel generators running in parallel with these systems. Mm -hmm. You can have batteries in parallel with these systems. Um, quite quite good to have peak shaving with batteries because these fuel cells are responding is a bit slower than batteries and diesel generators. So it, 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 it's good to with compensate with, uh, with battery power. So it sounds like it's probably ideal for larger ships that require say, more continuous power rather than a smaller, faster boat that needs... Yeah, uh, you would think of, of that. But uh, I mean, yeah, so probably a, a, a displacing boat, you know, a slower boat that goes, uh, that has a, a, a displacing hull. That's ideal, uh, but for a planning uh, boat, it, it could work as well. Yeah, it's just a matter of uh, how you ramp power and how you how you sort of control the the whole process. Um, so when when you do like a three megawatt or a six megawatt plant, you basically fire up the fuel cells as you go along. And if you want to have good acceleration, you have many fuel cells engaged. Once you have reached your your target speed you reduce the numbers that are engaged or lower the load on the on the whole system to optimize fuel consumption. And yes. kind of what have you guys seen as kind of an ideal uh, scenario for, is it good to have fuel cell and then maybe some battery also? And Yeah, and so uh, as our response basically from zero to 100 is 20 seconds. So it's not that slow but it's not really so fast as or as fast as, as uh, diesel generators um, we need a bit of a buffer either you could go diesel generators or you could go batteries to complement that so so battery for initial yes yeah, like the punch and then yeah. you yeah this follows yeah speed, right? exactly so what you gotcha. call the like the rush in current yeah. to to an inverter would be covered by the battery and then then this will be load following uh picking up the load very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's now in, it actually, we're commissioning the, the first the soup yacht project now yeah, of I three just, megawatts. So can you tell me about it's the project? project? Yeah, uh, so th this project is actually, we started in 2018 by building a concept of what we see here. Yeah. Um, so this is the result of, of that project. It's um, being commissioned as we speak. We basically install the cabinets now at the yard and uh, the fuel cells will be commissioned during spring. So uh, it's very exciting times and uh, it's the largest installation ever conducted of fuel cells in maritime. So how we're extremely it? excited about that. Do you know how big the ship is? It's uh, 119 meters. It's a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. It's yeah. a big boat, yeah. Uh, that's that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, do you have an idea? Have you done calculations on the range that you can get with? Uh... It's a few days of yeah. autonomy of uh, of the vessel. If you go uh, propulsion, full power. If you go for the hotel loads only, you go much further. Maybe a week, week and a half. So you can run your hotel loads yes. Uh, yes. for a week off of yeah. 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 And also, you know the so the. the a soup yacht really the installed power is quite big you know it's, it's a big power plant never really used it's used on on park loads and, and very low uh, power outputs so if you have six megawatts installed maybe you use two and a half to three megawatts at max when you're actually moving around so that that full power is used i think 
maybe one to two percent of the lifetime of yacht. Yeah. So this is a quite viable solution for covering a lot of the common sort of use cases for, for super yachts. Do you know uh, about hydrogen infrastructure at super yacht ports? Uh, like Montenegro or Mallorca, or are they are they starting to develop that? Or? Yeah, it's that's a quite relevant question. Obviously, yeah. the first movers will be filled at their home port, uh, okay. so okay. most likely somewhere in France. Can't tell you exactly where, but somewhere in France. Uh, Do they have truck, truck deliveries? It's, it's most likely truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that you can kind of yeah. get it anywhere. Then. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it's gonna can get it anywhere. It's for liquid hydrogen. It's actually quite easy to bunker. It's not that you know. It's it's a truckload of hydrogen. You yeah. you just push the hydrogen in by by increasing the pressure in the in the in the in the truck. Yeah. And then you actually just push that 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 hydrogen into the to the vessel. You're not pumping anything. You just probably pretty fast. Yeah, it's pretty fast because it's a one of the lightest media. Uh, there is right? and, and no risk of uh, fuel spills and probably pretty I mean you might have a leak here and there but uh, not, not uh, environmentally the pro damaging. the protocols for uh, filling liquid hydrogen is quite close to uh, or similar to, to LNG filling yep. procedures uh, you have to flush the lines you have to cool down the lines uh, of course you have to cool down the tank system before you actually fuel it the first time yeah uh, but at that once that is done, the, the the fueling is quick with liquid hydrogen. It's, it goes the same. It's, it's the same as diesel, I would say, or even faster. Exciting, exciting stuff. It's super exciting. Well, thanks, Johan. Yeah, That's you're awesome. welcome. Yeah. Okay, so we're standing in front of Twin Disc. They are one of the giants of the industry when it comes to transmission, and they have a new system to connect electric motors to the propulsion systems along with the diesel. And let's go check it out. So we're here with Tim Lawton of Twin Disc. Mm -hmm. uh, so what can you tell me about uh, your new system here? Yeah, so this is our uh, electric and hybrid system. Uh, these transmissions are standard transmissions uh, with a little changes so we can get the master, sorry, master clutch and PTI integrated into the transmission. Uh, this is one of our larger models. So the master clutch on the front is where you attach your diesel. And the master clutch allows us to disconnect the diesel for electric operation. The PTI is where we bring in the electric motor. The electric motor with the master clutch disconnected can then run the whole system because both the master clutch and the electric motor on it and your diesel at the front end can go out through the output shaft. Uh, so either one will drive the output shaft or both at the same time, assuming you size your propeller right. So we can run diesel only, we can run electric only, we can run diesel to the output and charge your batteries at the same time, or we can run the electric motor and your diesel engine together. Uh, Twin Disc is putting together the, our standard products with other people's electric motors and uh, battery systems with our controls, and we'll be the integrator and provide you a whole package. Just to keep it simple, so you have your diesel connects to your master clutch, Yep. you have your electric motor uh, connects right here, and then you yep. have your shaft output down here. That's correct. Twin Disc has been around since 1910, I think. It's somewhere around there. Uh, started in tractors with a couple of uh, clutches, just for industrial tractors, and got into marine business. We've been doing our own controls since the 70s, I believe. So uh, we've been around and been doing things. So it was a fairly simple into, uh, jump to go from transmission and controls to, hey, let's integrate the whole system together. Okay, so normally, on tugboats, you have uh, basically what's called a Z drive, where you have a diesel motor and it connects to a shaft uh, and then down to the propulsion unit. But this is something new. You call it an L drive. L drive. That's correct. Um, wh why, why do you call it an L drive? Uh, we describe following the power flow is the best way I've figured out how to describe it. It's so like you said, a Z drive comes from the diesel engine to a gearbox down and out. So it's basically the shape of a Z. L drive is electric motor, and so in this case, the electric motor, the shaft goes straight down, makes a uh, 90 degree turn to the propeller, and that's simply a shape of an L. So it makes makes it very easy. So this will this will actually rotate uh, 360 degrees. Correct. So your propeller is spinning, but also in this case, it's a nozzled propeller, 
this whole unit spins around the center axis 360 degrees. So there is no reverse gear. You use the 180 degrees to go make your vessel go in reverse or really in any direction you want. So we're here with Trevor Steele, Stoffel Systems, and uh, let's see if you could tell us a little bit about your, your battery that you have here. Yeah, so this is our VAT 1411. This is a system that's actually designed for a jet ski of all things. And we have some pretty advanced safety features on this. Um, this is uh, a system that's made with pouch cells. We're able to uh, do about 11 kilowatt hours in this. Um, it's uh, about 400 uh, volt system. We can put about 16 of these together. So it's just a lot of, a lot of different options that we can do on this. Um, you can actually see how the battery system works in here, which is kind of a, an interesting view. Normally when we would see this, this would actually be all covered up or we would have it uh, we wouldn't have it in nice colors here. So you can actually see kind of how a battery system works in this. So what you'll see here is you actually got the blue battery cells there. It's all 3D printed, so it's it's all uh, inert. So you have blue cells there. Those are going to be pouch cells. And then, and then we have those, um, we, uh, in between those, those cell rows there, we actually have our thermal protection, our fire protection, and our constant pressure foam that's uh, providing constant compression on those battery cells. The pouch cells like to, to um, Grow and shrink a little bit. They like Sorry, to actually. Can we look at your cutaway? Here? Yeah. So, uh, pouch cells actually like to expand and contract a little bit as you charge and discharge them. So, what we do instead is we actually put a constant pressure foam on there that allows us to get the maximum lifespan out of those battery cells. So, th this is a. Uh, so this, this would be a. This cell. is the battery cell. This is the representation of the battery cell. And then this is going to be the constant pressure foam here. This is going to be our mica layer. So this is going to be our, our fire protection layer. And this is going to be our thermal protection layer. So, this is. Uh, aluminum or graphite, and that's actually going to wick away the heat down to the bottom. Once we wick away that heat, that's going to look like this down here. It's actually going to wick away that heat down to the very bottom of the, of the pack. And then if we go back to our model here, you can see that we have a cold plate down there. And that cold plate right down there is what we're going to be using to, um, we're actually going to have uh, a, a liquid system. There's a combination of water and glycol. We're actually going to run that system through a somewhat turbulent flow through that plate, and it's, the water's going to go, the, the coolant's going to go through here like that, and that's going to come out this line right here. And that allows us to actively cool the battery pack. That allows us to get much higher discharge rates and a little bit higher charge rates as well, because we can better modulate the and regulate the battery temperature. Do you have your uh, your cool glycol? This is, this is the, the line in here and the line out here. So we have about uh, we have twelve of these um, at different modules here. Uh, in this pack, this goes all the way down and then all the way up. How much power can you get out of a module? Uh, so the module, I'm not sure, but this battery pack is a uh, 350 volts, uh, the 400 volt system. So this is a very high, this is that what we consider to be a high power system. High and it's system. 11, 11.2 kilowatt, 11 hours kilowatt hours. For this side. It's a little bit big for 11.2 kilowatt hours. However, we also have our ba our complete battery management system in here. This is going to be a battery management system monitor board. We're going to have the master board up there. And then we've got a telematics in here as well. We also have our, our disconnects, fuses, contactors, all of that stuff, pre-charge, all that stuff is going to be right in here. So everything, the, the battery monitoring system, control board, is all contained inside your, your module. Yeah, correct. So this doesn't require an external uh, power distribution unit. So we actually have that built into the system. So for connections, all you really have is your glycol and uh, your so high this, voltage. So this is going to be high voltage here. This is actually using, it's using h -bill, so there's actually no high voltage ex exposed when, you are, uh, plug when you're are plugging this in or unplugging it. It's actually going to disconnect the high voltage um, before you would actually ever, yeah. ever have that exposed. And then in here, we have our uh, CAN communication port. So this actually has a lot of different uh, safety systems integrated with it. We always look at safety as a layered approach. At least that's how Stoffel Systems does it. So we look first at our active safety, which is going to be through the battery management system. The battery management system detects that the battery pack is getting into an unsafe state. We're going to go and disconnect that from the rest of the system. We're going to let the system know that the battery needs to be maintained in the, in the safe state. And this is what the battery pack is actually able to do. Um, if we get into something where we're still getting into an unsafe state, then we get into our passive system. So that's going to be our fuses. It's also going to be our passive propagation system, resistance systems here as well. All of that's going to really allow us to have a completely safe battery pack that uh, means that we're not going to get pass or we're not going to get propagation.
Okay, we are standing in front of the Boeli booth where we're going to go talk to Giannis, the founder of this company. They're based in Slovenia. They make a, a high quality electric motor and clutch system. Let's check it out. So we're here with Giannis of Boeli. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your motor system that you have here? Hi, Justin. Uh, our motors are radial flux machines starting at 40 kilowatts and we are going up to 230 kilowatts. Um, in the housing of SPS 30, we have a possibility to make a stack link of two motors together. If this motor is too small, we can use a big one, BDH PS 300, which starts at 120 kilowatt and goes up to 650 continuous power. It's very suitable for hybrid uh, propulsion with integrated clutch. Can you tell me like a little bit about your company when? Where are you based? When did you? When were you founded? Uh, uh, our company you... is located in Slovenia. Uh, we were founded in 1982 by my grandfather, and uh, my father took it over in 1985. I took over the company in 2011, and um, yeah, we started in hype, in marine business in 2017 with the first hybrid propulsion systems in cooperation with Emotion Hybrid. We've made some projects on different San, San Lorenzo vessels. Uh, we have made, um, how to say, uh, some projects on Perini, on Tancoa. Um, and uh, at the moment, we are doing several applications uh, on different catam power catamarans um, all around the globe. Uh, one of your customers is also NT Systems uh, that Correct. makes sort of a modular inboard. Uh, yes. Can you talk about kind of your partnership with them um, and, and what you do for them. With uh, NT, we started cooperate a couple years ago, and uh, we uh, um, we are supplying NT electric motors in the range of uh, 40 to 230 kilowatt. Uh, they are using uh, our motors in their um, uh, electric uh, package, uh, where they uh, how to say assemble the entire system and they place it in different applications starting at small uh, power boats and um, how to say currently i believe also some bigger vessels so so your company you can supply motors essentially from uh, small vessels small uh, sport sport vessels to up to 250 feet yes we can uh, we can uh, supply um, electric motors for uh, small uh, um, how to say uh, electric boats of five meters and we can use uh, the big motors on the super yachts and the motors can be used also as a generators on variable speed generators so in the entire range okay uh, all motors are water cooled um, uh, have the best efficiency of 97 percent uh, so, so what do we have here? We have uh, one of your clutch systems here. Correct. Uh, can you talk about it? I, I think we are talking earlier, you, you have a uh, bronze fitted to the stainless steel. Uh, how yes. can maybe how it works? Uh, uh, the clutch here is a spring applied, normally closed clutch. It has uh, internal and external uh, gears, which transmit the torque, the full torque at the f and full at full load. Um, uh, we can mechanically engage the clutch uh, at idle speed of the diesel engine or electric motor. Uh, firstly, the internal gear uh, will come in contact as a friction uh, disc. And uh, until the speed is synchronized, we increase the torque of one engine. And uh, as soon as the internal teeth find the right position, the clutch will close. Um, it is used in several uh, applications uh, from small vessels to the big ones uh, integrated on or inside of the electric engine uh, we propose always to have how to say uh, the right coupling from different suppliers um, yeah. do, you, do you happen to know uh, how many hours that your your clutch system has been in use for a customer vessel uh, or, or use k or years or... Uh, currently the first clutches in marine were uh, installed in 2018 and they are still in service without uh, any uh, problems on the, on the vessel. Uh, the electric motors are, are uh, radial flux uh, with um, inner rotor. Uh, normally they have 30 pole poles 
uh, they are water cooled. Um, the housing is made from um, aluminium. Uh, we use uh, uh, extrusion uh, for uh, for this. Um, how to say the uh, the winding inside of the motor has a specific shape. Uh, flat wire. Uh, we can increase the filling factor, and we have without a problem. Um, a much higher occurrence inside of the winding. So you guys, you have your own uh, machining to, to actually construct your own motors. Uh, and, and yes, all uh, together with uh, um, partner company Cineton, we are designing and developing electric motors in Slovenia and we make the complete manufacturing of the motors in-house. We make also all the tooling necessary for the serial production in-house. And so we also have NT Systems on display. Their their partner, their motor partner, NT Systems has their, developed their own throttle lever. Um, I've personally used this one on an electric jet tender, and uh, kind of one of the unique things about it is they spent a lot of time on the ergonomics, on the feel of it, and the machining itself. It's like uh, very high quality aluminum. Uh, you have a safety lever up here. Uh, safety catch and it just the, the whole feel of it is is so nice with the the actions very smooth um, <clears throat> very very nice to use w anything else you want to talk about the, the company um, I want to meet you back and I would like to invite you to Amsterdam uh, where we present a little big uh, a little bigger uh, a portfolio of the product and uh, yeah I hope we'll talk there as well Okay, so you're you're going to be at the Marine Hybrid Expo in Amsterdam yes. uh, in June? In June, correct. Okay, uh, it would be great to see you there. Me as well. Okay. It was a pleasure. Pleasure. So we're, we're here with Oliver Taylor. He's the director of the Electric Hybrid Marine Expo, uh, both here in North America. We're here in Long Beach and also in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, so first of all, you know, thanks again for, for uh, speaking with us. And, no, of course, no. And... Uh, so what what inspired the the show itself? Uh, what was the inspiration for? Yeah, so um, my company UKI Media and Events. We're a, a big events organising company and, and publishing firm. Um, been running for uh, about twenty five years plus now, I think. Um, we run all sorts of different um, shows. Uh, one of them uh, was in the automotive industry, specifically electric and hybrid. Um, and uh, we run a publication uh, within that. Um, but we are having a lot of uh, suppliers were saying we're getting a lot of interest with, with the, 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 mar the maritime industry. Um, and uh, yeah, people are starting to now look at ways to electrify vessels um, that, uh, that they hadn't done before. So we then um, thought this is yeah, a, a perfect chance to, to run a, uh, a publication um, and, uh, and potentially an exhibition. So we first published our, our magazine, which you can see here, um, published this uh, 12 years ago. Um, and um, from the success of the, uh, of the magazine, uh, then decided to, um, to run the, um, the, the Amsterdam show. Uh, Amsterdam has been running for, for 10 years now. Um, and it started off with, uh, similar to kind of what we see here today in uh, America, a very, very small uh, exhibition, a lot of kind of new companies, startup uh, uh, companies um, that, um, yeah, see the potential of uh, the, the, the industry. Um, we had about, I think, 80 companies first that took part, taking very small stands. Um, and then within that, year on year, it's just been growing and growing. And now we have about 230 exhibitors that take part, um, uh, yeah, taking a large, large haul. Um, and then, of course, from the success of that, we've now all launched our American show. Um, this is the, the second year that we're running. Um, uh, the previous one took part in, in Houston, Texas. Um, thought to move it to the, to the West Coast, um, as a lot of the... Um, yeah, regulations are very not stricter here and they're kind of paving the way of the electrification and hybridization market uh, in, in America. So, yeah, taking it to, um, to Long Beach and um, yeah, that's why we're here, here today. So the, the Amsterdam show has been running for 20 years, the second year in North America. Uh, from, from your perspective, I mean, you're, you're interfacing with a lot of uh, electric 
and hybrid marine suppliers. Um, what's kind of your personal take on the industry itself, uh, the, the state of, of the industry as it is now in 2024? Yeah, so um, so it's, it's, it's 10 years it's been it's running, not, not 20 years. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I, I think what we're realizing that there's not a one key that fits all. Um, I think that what works for one vessel doesn't work for, for another. So um, going fully electric, um, you can see amazing benefits from, from a ferry that has a, a specific route that they do. And when they um, uh, dock, they can fast charge. That suit perfectly suits fully electric. You have other vessels, maybe ocean going vessels, um, that, um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really work for because um, you do need a uh, potentially a kind of running a, a, some sort of hybrid system. Um, which potentially, um, yeah, would suit that suit that better. So, I think that while we run our events, is because we we bring everyone together in the industry. We have um, industry leading companies who are very clever people here that are uh, kind of analysing and saying, okay, well, this works, and we've seen this in the automotive industry, and actually now we can put this onto this vessel, and this works here. So. Yeah, we, we run the event um, to, to bring the industry together to discuss and, and see what, what works. Um, and yeah, we, you might go down a certain avenue and it, it, it doesn't work. And then it's like, OK, well, let's rethink that. Let's go back to the drawing board and, and, and actually now let's work towards this. Um, we're seeing new technologies coming out. Um, uh, of course, different uh, fuels that now can be used, alternative fuels, so if that's ammonia, um, hydrogen, obviously, with, with, with fuel cells. We've got a few companies that, that take part that, that supply this technology. Um, and um, yeah, of course, then you've got everything that's happening on the vessel, but then there's the, the port side of things as well. And we've got a lot of companies um, here now that can provide shore charging technology um, that allows these electrified vessels to kind of charge up when they're, um, when they're in the harbor or in the port. Um, and um, yeah, ultimately trying to lead the way for kind of cleaner, uh, more efficient um, technologies that can provide cost savings, that provide a better um, environment, the lower emissions, um, and um, yeah, that, that people um, now want want to see. Um, really, we're again here for for next year in uh, in Long Beach. Um, dates are. Uh, March 19th and 20th. Um, now starting to get a lot of companies that are um, uh, booking up for the show. Um, so yeah, it would be great to to see more people come down, uh, meet our vendors, meet the, the guys leading the way and to understand the electrification journey what, what, as a ship owner, as an operator, what do they need to do? What regulations are coming in what uh grants investment are available to them um yeah w what are the steps that they need to take to put an electric vessel on the water but also what benefits do they get if there's less maintenance or you don't have the uh, kind of government coming and, and looking at uh, the emissions um it's just future proofing your vessel um for for years to come so yeah come down and, and see us uh, next year okay Thank you, Oliver. Brilliant. Perfect. Okay, so we're here with Selman of Ampere, the, the battery technology company. And uh, behind us we, us, we have some uh, battery modules. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your, your model, modules and technology? Of course, of course, Justin. Thank you very much for coming here. Well, we are designing different sizes of battery pack with different chemistries and voltage levels. So what we do is we don't provide any single chemistry or any single voltage level. <laughs> but within different housings, like we have five to eight different housings, we provide different capacities, different voltage levels, and different chemistries to end customers. Okay. Uh, can you can you talk us through your module? What what's kind of the technology you have? Uh, well, we have a modular design. We have um, as small as like forty kilowatt hour battery packs, and also as big as one hundred and twenty eight kilowatt hour battery packs within these different housings. We have modules inside lithium ion cells and modules we mostly use prismatic cells and they are just welded together with bus bars and lasers and so on and we have also battery management system inside uh, which regulates and controls everything which is happening inside the battery pack we have a cooling system we have cooling plates inside the battery packs and they are delivered to marine industries transport industries highway equipments like 
grocery trucks as well, and they can be used also in the marine industry. Okay. So you, you would drop this uh, module yeah. into a vessel, and then all, all that's needed is uh, you connect uh, high voltage uh, lines, the communication, and your cooling system? That's correct. That's correct. You can put as many as you want. I mean, we have a limitation of like 16 units mm -hmm. of each battery pack. But uh, if you can take this one and put like 10 in parallel, let's say, then you reach an uh, energy level of 400 kilowatt hours. Since they are connected in parallel, that brings also additional redundancy. If one fills out, then you can continue with the rest of them. And this is the signal connector, as you mentioned. This is the power connector. You put them in parallel and you can connect through these hoses the liquid cooling system where you can just stabilize the temperature inside the cells. So that's it. I mean, it's a very simple uh, like device to operate. Yeah. Um, so you were talking, you mentioned that you use different chemistries of the batteries. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk us through, you see you have a chart back here. Um, we'll, you use lithium iron phosphate uh, and is it nickel manganese yeah, cobalt. Yeah. Um, and the other one is the LTO uh, on the right row, let's say. So there are actually three main uh, chemistries in the lithium ion industry nowadays, which one of them is the NMC, which is uh, very often used in the cars, uh, in BMW, in Audi. And the other one is the LFP, the Chinese uh, guys are using most of them. And the LTO is a specific chemistry, which is uh, not very uh, well known, uh, but it has superior power capabilities and cycling capabilities which is very suitable for fuel cell applications or serious hybrid applications, which might also be the case in the marine applications. So there are just pros and cons of each different chemistry. NMC is the lightest one. And nowadays, they're also this, one of the safest ones, actually. Uh, the LFP is well known with their safety records, uh, but the weight is slightly more uh, per uh, unit volume. Uh, and the LTO has uh, some uh, superior power capabilities like they can do very high charge and discharge rates but their energy density is low and the price is like uh, three times more than the nmc or lfp let's say but the total cost of ownership of lto is low because they withstand like twenty thousand cycles and that makes them very suitable for uh, serious hybrid applications for instance so lto you get uh, the benefit is really long life cycle yeah, uh, a lot of discharge and charge cycles. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. But higher upfront cost, and then NMC is the highest energy density. Exactly, that's the case. We can go in this on the cell level. We can go as high as like 260 watt hour per kilogram, mm -hmm. uh, and but the LTO has only 100 watt hour per kilogram, whereas LFP has like 180 to 200 watt hour per kilogram. There's just pros and cons. There is no perfect battery cell chemistry, but there are just uh, like um suitable chemistry for the student for the right application actually so, so we can provide all of them in our portfolio so if you had uh let's say like more high performance vehicle where you needed a lot of high power discharge uh, uh which one would be most well important? if you need at the same time also energy then the nmc is the right choice for them mm -hmm. but if you have other sources of energy inside the vehicle like serious hybrid systems or fuel cell systems then the lto is the right pick and if you don't have any weight concerns, but you want to have the highest ratings of safety, then the LFP is the right choice. So, I mean, the, the C ratings of LFP is, LTO is very high, mm -hmm. but the drawback is that they weight more, I mean, two times more or three times more even. Uh, you need to decide where, which one to pick from and prepare for. The good thing is we can provide all of them uh, to the end customer, whichever they might need. If they start with one of our chemistries, let's say, for their next, next application, they can pick other Ampere batteries with the same uh, connection interfaces, as you can see here. So they don't have to change their software layout or software design, or even the way they mount the battery pack mechanically to the chassis or to the boat mm -hmm. is always the same. The only thing is changing inside the battery pack is the chemistry or the voltage range. So that's our flexibility and that's our uh, value which we are adding into the market. Okay. Uh yeah, thank you very much. You're Salman. welcome. I You're welcome, that. Justin. Take thank care. You, thank you. Okay, so we're here with uh, Adria Hover. He's the founder and president of the International Electric Marine Association, IEMA. Uh, so can you, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your organization and, and uh, what the goals are? Sure thing. Um, International Electric Marine Organization is a nonprofit uh, 5013C uh, corporation registered in New York State. Uh, with the aim to uh, 
protect you know, the global health and environment. How do we do that? This is the main question. I believe that we all agree on the objective of protecting the environment, but how do we do it? This is one of the main questions. And we believe in innovation and technology as being the, you know, uh, uh, the way and the tools that will allow us to accelerate this process uh, of uh, protecting you know, our environment and protecting the health of our future generations. So um, who handles and who owns these technologies are all these companies that are our members, that they have the brain power and they have you know, the capacity to uh, produce all these technologies to you know, um, re refeed, to uh, reconvert you know, infrastructure. So uh, we have a name to represent all these technologies and at the same time, we have a name to decarbonize, to make sure that we make combustion-free uh, areas and uh, fresh waters and uh, uh, oceans and harbors. But in order to claim and, and generate you know, public opinion towards the decarbonization, we need to provide solutions. We don't believe in just you know, uh, uh, presenting a problem, which is pretty obvious to us, is providing solutions. And it's not about one solution or another, it's about all of them. And uh, we don't think there is good guys or bad guys. I think it's just, you know, collaborative, uh, you know, spirit. And uh, through innovation, um, in order, to, uh, once again, to protect, you know, the, the future generations and our environment. Okay. So you guys had a, a launch a couple of months ago. And uh, how, how's the membership been? We had a press release about the 15th of uh, February. Um, it was an international press release. We reached out to more than 200 media and institutional outlets. We had great response uh, among uh, regulatory institutions, among media specialized, but as well, you know, mainstream, you know, media outlets. Um, we right now we are on about north of our uh, 60 members, and uh, we have members from all over the world. Uh, almost on every continent, uh, about 60% represented in Europe, then the United States, and uh, then uh, uh, East Asia. Uh, the goals for AIMA in the future is to represent cross-section every division of the maritime industry, from inland to ocean, and uh, from electric grid, electric generation, sustainable electric generation, through the hardware, you know, on charging, uh, and to the vessel, regardless of its size or region or usage. And we would like to be the place in, to go in order to learn and to meet what are the latest technologies and what are actual solutions that exist to mitigate, you know, and to convert fleets, entire fleets, to uh, convert, you know, entire ports and large infrastructure, but as well as how to refeed, you know, uh, uh, an oyster farmer vessel, uh, which, you know, have a huge impact on its community, very rooted, you know, on its cultural and uh, regional, you know, history. So we understand that these stories matter, you know, to inspire, you know, the large uh, conversation, you know, worldwide. So spirit of collaboration and cross representational power. So we're here in front of the Northern Lights booth, where they are the U.S. West Coast supplier of MAN diesels. And we're going to go talk to Josephine about their new hybrid system for their MAN diesel. Um, so this is this is a standard uh, MAN diesel. Yes. And you have a, a new sort of hybrid system attached to that. Uh, can you okay. tell me a little bit about how this system works? Yeah. So we got the conventional diesel engine. Um, it's got an electromagnetical clutch attached to it, and then the uh, e motor to that and then uh, it goes out to the gearbox. So what, what are the benefits of this system as opposed to just using a standard van diesel? Well, you can uh, run it in six different modes. We got the modes displayed right here if you want to uh, look at that. Um, you can obviously run it just in electric mode, the zero emission mode. Uh, then you got the diesel electric mode where you can um, at both. The e-motor also functions as a, a genset, like it will, or generator, it will uh, charge the batteries. Um, you can run it in hotel mode and uh, you can also run it in boost mode to, to have both diesel and electric um, run in together. And then of course just conventional diesel if you run out of battery power or 
you have let's in case of emergency in the workload industry that uh, pretty important to have a, a plan B if something fails, right? Yeah, just just thinking about things that have happened to me on boats, it's actually uh, very nice to have an additional redundancy if, if something were to happen to the motor. And Absolutely. You, if you've spent any amount of time working on boats, uh, it, eventually you will lose an engine due to you know, bad fuel or uh, their gaskets blowing up or turbo issues. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a cool thing to have. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing that you can, if something were to happen to the engine, you can use your electric motor yeah. uh, to kind of limp back into port. Yep. Um, anything else you want to say about the system? No, it's going to become um, available. Um, as I told you, we have a, a ferry running in uh, Lake Como, which is a successful um, first project. And um, they will have two more projects in the near future. So the Germans are conservative with the rollout. So we will have to wait a little bit until these projects are successful and they get the stamp of approval for perfection um, from MAN and then they're also willing to roll it out to the US market and all over the world. Um, as long as they can service it uh, good, we, we also have to start um, that part of, of the uh, hybrid systems. Right? Uh, okay, so we're here with Kenny of uh, Transfluid and also uh, Bell Marine. Marine. Okay. Um, so you, you guys make transmissions and also uh, electric propulsion. Um, yes, we do hybrid and electric propulsion technology, yes. Okay. Uh, can you talk us through kind of what sure. you have here? At, at your group? Uh, so this is our inboard. It's called a Drive Master. We do as small as a 2KW, uh, go all the way up to a 55KW. And that ranges from 50 volts up to 300 volts. And so this is torque at all RPMs. This could replace up to a 30 horsepower diesel in this size. Okay. And we, we do everything plug and play. So it comes display, throttle, uh, batteries, uh, the whole so nine yards. These are all your components, your throttle. Yes, sir. Uh, your, your screen here, your display. Yep. And then we also do a hybrid. Mm -hmm. So... Can you talk us through kind of how this hybrid system works? Um, yes, of course. Your motors up here. Okay. Yeah, these are the motors off of the PTO pads. So here's where the diesel attaches. Mm -hmm. So you, you mount your diesel to this clutch. In diesel mode, your batteries are being charged through the motors because they become generators in diesel mode because this splitter box is always turning. So motors are generators in diesel mode, charging batteries back. You can clutch off the electric. Uh, you could clutch off the diesel, putting the diesel in neutral, then you're using the electric propulsion. Uh, so now you're just zero admission using electric motors. And then a uh, third option is you can do a boost mode. So you could add the KW of the motors on top of the diesel engine. So you're, and then your shaft output is, is here. Yes. Yeah, this is our transmission. You could use any marine gear. So we're pretty agnostic and the actual module is just here to here. So this could be your typical twin disc or ZF or any marine gear. This ours goes up to 350 horsepower. So we're showing ours because we, we make one. Okay. Um, so so Transfluid has been in business a long time. Is it 20 years? Uh, since 1957. Okay, so a lot yeah. longer than that. Yeah, that, and that's where it came from of those transmissions, fluid couplings, uh, slowly starting to make more of the products that we have married together to create a hybrid. Gotcha. And doing it now for about 10 years. With hybrid, yes. hybrid electric systems. Okay. Yeah, and Bell Marine has been around 20 years plus. Okay. And uh, so, so Bell Marine, um, they, they make out drives, and, and uh, is that a pod drive there? Yeah, so Transfluid is making all of the product, like manufacturing, and then Bell Marine is the full electric representation out of the Netherlands. Gotcha. So we're all subsidiaries out of the Transfluid headquarters outside of Milan, Italy. Gotcha. Transfluid is, is out of Milan, Milan and then Bell Marine is uh, Netherlands. Netherlands yes. Okay. And then uh, we're out of Atlanta, Georgia for North American representation. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thank Dave. you. Hey guys, that wraps it up for the Electric Hybrid Expo in Long Beach. We had some amazing conversations. We saw some incredible technology. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for the next episode. We got a lot of exciting post tests coming out.